Lords, if you can survive this, Lords. Oh my goodness, he's coming. No, 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 no. The game number two between me and Dunadine. This time we are picking the factions. I'm picking Isengard. He's picking Gondor. So we get to play the El Clasico matchup on the map Forts of Isen. Last game was between my Isengard, his Mordor. I was able to win that one. And hopefully I can also win as Isengard against his Gondor on the map Forts of Isen, a crossing point of the river Isen located near Isengard. So we basically have a home advantage, hopefully, you know. We are also hosts in this game, which is of course a huge advantage for us. And I'm gonna build the Uruk pit in a furnace. Uh oh, it's lagging. What's happening? It's kind of freezing. Hopefully it's not gonna be unplayable. Come on now. Please, please, please. I mean, it is literally frozen. Okay. Oh man, this is not going well, boys. Please, come on, come on, come on, come on. Never give up, never surrender. It is not over until it's over. Okay, nice. It's working again. Very weird. It didn't happen before to me. Because it was not lagging, it was actually freezing. But it's fine. Okay, so I'm gonna build a Uruk in a furnace. I think that's like the most, uh, you know, solid and also safe opening with Isengard against good factions like Gondor and Rohan. Because even if we would lose our, you know, settlements outside, we should be still in a good spot. Let's see. I'm not sure. He's gonna attack from middle or from the top side. That's a big question. And for that reason, we need to use the workers to scout. You know, when you play Isengard against Gondor, the most important stage of the game is gonna be the early game. So we wanna make sure to survive against those two soldiers. And we see them coming from the top side. I mean, unfortunately, we saw them a little bit too late. So we might not be able to protect this area, unfortunately. But it's okay. Remember on the Alvin Wood, we have no leadership from Warchant. Alvin Wood grants him additional armor and nullifies our own leadership. But Uruks are still very strong in the shield wall formation. We should be able to stand here and fight. And also bring more Uruks. So we in a 3v2 situation, we can definitely win this, no problemo. The micro is going to be very important. We want to make sure that every one of our Uruks is able to participate in the fight. That's a um, very thing, very common thing people don't uh, pay attention to. When you play evil faction, we have hordes. So basically you have more units in the battalion. That's why you need to micro a bit more. Because the last thing you want is your Uruks, few of them, not being able to fight, you know? I mean, he's buying time, and unfortunately, during all this time, I can't purchase my, you know, settlement that's really, really bad. But luckily, we have an untouched furnace in a lumber mill, so we are actually making a decent amount of money. But... <gasps> no! I want to quit this game so badly now. I want to quit this game so badly now! Dude! It's like the worst thing ever. I lost 200 for no reason, man. The worker needed 8 hours to get to build the building. Why you need so much time, worker? Oh man, that's like the worst start ever. It would be even better if we would build this and lose it to the soldiers. Because we just lost 200 without making a single cent from the settlement. This puts us so far behind, boys. Oh my goodness. Now we need to creep. Oh my. I mean, he's gonna have to gun the knights on the field very, very soon. Oh man, this is so rough. This is so rough. I can't believe that. Oh my goodness, man. Okay, so we need to focus, boys. We need to focus. Never give up. Never surrender. But that's we are not starting on a good foot. We are not starting on a good foot. I can't tell you that much. Okay, we need to creep also this one in the middle. That's very important. Oh, I can't believe it, guys. Oh, I mean, it, it's my bad. Because I could have cancelled the building, but I was too greedy. I was like, okay, never mind. He's going to be able to build this. And he has Gondor Knights on the field already. So we need a lot of pikemen very, very soon. And also very important, we need to kind of stop him from creeping. You get the money. And get out. Maybe we can fight this too. I mean, we have... Actually, now we have also more furnaces. We need to get to industry very fast. So normally you can also skip the industry when you play Isengard against Gondor and go for the land. But I can't do this because... No. 
my eco is not looking that good so i will need the industry you know very very early i mean i just can't handicap myself but hopefully we can pull this off and uh, die pp nice okay so um, at this point of the game it's very important for us to keep spamming furnaces and also the uruk pikemen that's gonna be very important to not only protect our own settlements but also pressure the map a little bit and counter his gondor knight it will force him eventually to make some soldiers later on but until this is gonna happen we need to play extremely patient and in you know again it's also very important for us to deny him from creeping because every creep he will take he will get more experience and more power points and this power points will lead him later on into the ranger's ranger special summon which is a big counter to our strategy which is to spam pikemen keep spamming boys we have almost the power points for the industry that's going to be quite helpful I, I might also go for land i don't know yet but my eco is still not looking that good we will also need something like lures later on sariman of course i mean isengard basically needs a lot of cash keep spamming those uruk pikemen i mean like again this is not the way you want to play this matchup actually we give him so much room which is definitely a big mistake from our side but all depends because of the huge mistake we made at the beginning of the game. You know, losing the settlement is like, you know, starting the game with like 10 person handicap. Okay, I mean, he's creeping, so that's certain. Oh, he's being, not paying attention. Nice, paying attention now. Oh, but we can fight this. I'm not gonna go for length. Um, in a one-on-one -on -one situation, the pikemen are still stronger than the Gondor Knights, even when they have like Blades and Elven Wood. We can't fight this, that's a big counter. It's like the, one of the best counters actually. And in this case, we are talking about the Isengard pikemen. They are definitely also very mobile, and compared to the pikemen of the Mordor faction, the runes, or the Tower guys from the Men of the West or Gondor faction, they are not as fast. The Uruk pikemen or the Uruk Urukai units, crossbowmen, pikemen, and Urukai swordmen, they are the fastest infantry in the game, which is going to be helpful to keep somewhat you know with the speed of the enemy knights okay i mean that's not looking too bad we are actually claiming a lot of map control but i don't know how many power points he collected i'm pretty certain he's very close oh here's boromir nice one boromir strategy in 2.22 oh he was also get the able to get the last to get the money and get out okay nice so we need to recruit Lourdes now. That's going to be very important as a counter to heroes. So Lourdes basically the best anti-hero. Oh, but he's preparing for a base rush, boys. Ooh, ooh. Okay. I mean, we need to make sure to not lose the Uruk, but that's the most valuable building in the base. And that's the one building we gotta keep protected no matter what. We have Lourdes. We can also use Cripple from Lourdes actually to one-shot one of the Gondor Knights instantly. Demolish the buildings in time. Demolish. Porcupine. But his micro is clean, man. He's microing very well. Oh, oh, maybe not. Cripple. Come on, Lord. Take this. Nice. That's good. That's very good, actually. Amazing. Amazing. Okay, Boromir can't catch up with the Uruk Pikemen. Boromir's movement speed is improved, so Boromir is faster in compared to Gimli, Faramir on foot. But there are heroes like Lords or Legolas. They are still way faster in compared to Boromir. So that's going to be very important for later on. So our lords will be able to catch up to uh, Boromir. And with level 3, we also unlock the Carnage, which gives us the chance to cripple them first with the level 1 ability. Then draw the sword, use Carnage, and go all out. We're going to make sure that Boromir is going to experience the same hell like he did in... The films. Oh man, I was not paying attention. Oh, but he's also not paying attention. Okay. So he needs to go back to the web, well, uh, base now. I mean, he has now upgrades on his Gondor Knights, also heavy armor. And also on the land, he's able to kill the pikemen in the one-on-one situation. I don't want to feed too many power points. So this matchup, actually, when you play as Isengard, requires a lot of macro. And we need to pay attention to multiple things at once. Like this one, for example. We don't want to feed too many power points to Boromir. But experience points. Right, 
I mean, he's like everywhere, basically. Okay, we were able to win this fight, it's good. We have like, I would say, 90% of the map. We don't want to lose the armory though. Oh, but he's going to commit on that one. Oh, he's also going to use heal. That means, that, but that means he has no more heal for Boromir. So if we can cripple Boromir, we might be able to kill him. Armory has been taken now, but it's not the end of the world. I want to cripple this Boromir so badly. We have Fortunate. He has no more lane. He used it like a minute ago. So it's on cooldown. And he has not heal either because he has used the heal before. So just in case he might have the land, we have also the Tainted land to cover his land. And again, Boromir is not faster than Lourdes. Lourdes will be able to cripple him. Does he have land though? That's a big question. If yes, I can... Oh, but he has the Horn. We have no fear resistant yet. We need at least Lourdes level 5 or um, level 3 units or, you know, Saruman. Oh, he used the land, so we need to cover this land fast. Fast, 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 fast. Remember, he has no land. I mean, he has no heal. That means we can eventually manage to kill Boromir. He's quite tanky though. And remember, he has like a knockback. So he's going to be able to knock our units down on the ground. Chase him. Chase him. Lourdes, chase him too. Lourdes should be able to outrun him. We have no Palantir, which could make us even faster. And now, he has the soldiers of Gondor for the map control. I want to give the last hit to, Bor uh, to Lourdes if I can. I want to... I need to protect Lourdes. Okay. Shoot Lourdes. One more time. One more time, Lourdes. Okay, Lourdes got the last hit. It's huge, actually. It's amazing. We are getting very close to level 5. That's going to be also a very important power spark. Let's throw the sword and use Carnage to kill those soldiers. You wanna run away from me, soldiers? You can't. You can't. Because that's... This is no rubble of mindless or heroes. This is the Uruk hero Lourdes. Level 5, that's massive, boys. That's good. Oh, he's not paying attention to his content knights. Nice. We killed one more battalion. That's amazing. Amazing. I mean, we are not doing too bad, despite the fact that we had, like, a very rough early game. But we need to cl close this game ASAP. So we need to kind of manage to get to outpost control and start sieging him. The last thing you want is to give Gondor too much time into the late game, in which he can recruit Gandalf and make even trebuchet and stuff. Oh oh. I mean, we can fight this. We have even Lourdes leadership. The pikemen, they will hit like a truck. So it's a big mistake from him to try to fight against us. He can't win this. Cripple? No. Cripple. One hit. One hit. Can you do it? No. He was one HP, dude. It would be massive if you could kill him, but it's okay. It's not the end of the world. Okay, now we can also try to save up for Saruman. And maybe we need also Vorks, though. So let's go for the Vork Pit. I mean... Dude, I'm so excited, actually. You know, <laughs> I'm panicking, boys. I'm panicking. I'm panicking. Beautiful. Okay, let's go for, for this one. We need to keep paying attention to our lords. Our lords. Oh my goodness, did I build the armory instead of the work pit? Oh man. Dude. Uh, what is happening with me, man? What's going on with me, boys? I just misclicked. I lost like 1200 for no reason. Almost 1200. No way, dude. And not even mentioning the time I lost. I lost so much time. The soldiers are so annoying. We need Vorks very, very fast. Oh man. He has even heavy armor and forge plates on them. That means Lords can't even kill them that easily. And there comes another base rush, boys. So we need to be careful. Oh man, dude. I'm, I'm tr uh, trust me, you know, I'm outplaying myself in this game. I, pl uh, I did it twice, you know. And I can't afford to make mistakes like that against players like Dunadine. I can't. Oh man. Dude, the problem is, I don't think the time is in our favor, boys. I'm telling you. I don't think the time is going to be in our favor. So we need to be playing better. Playing better. If you want to have a chance to win this one. Eating power points is a no-go. And the worst thing that can happen to us is if he gets to eagles later on. Eagles can murder our heroes like Lourdes and Saruman in a few seconds. And the only good thing is that we... Oh, beautiful. Nice. So the only good thing is that we have Lourdes leadership. That's going to be very important for later on. In, in order to burst down the units like Boromir and also Gandalf, we need more DPS. And Lourdes level 5 gives us 60% more damage, which of course is going to be incredibly important.
And also with Lourdes nearby, we have also fear resistance. So his Horn of Gondor is not going to be working out when Lourdes is getting close to him, to the combos or the pikemen, as you can see. But Lourdes has to stay close to them. Oh, he healed him. Oh, no, he knocked us down. Oh, man. But I think we can still kill Boromir. He has no more heal. Just kill him. Kill him. The Alvin warriors, they are kind of bullying us, though. Nice. Run, Lourdes. I think we will lose him, boys. I think we will lose him. That's so bad, dude. Lords, oh man, we need backup. Come on, 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 please. The the rings are shooting. Come on, Lords, you can do it. Lords, run. Should I give him Palantir? I don't know. I I don't know, man. Lords, if you can survive this, Lords. Oh, never mind, Lords. Oh man, that was close though. We almost saved them. But you know, the problem is I can't stop if I stop. You know, to deal with the Gondor Knight, the one unit, then the ranges will kill me. If I don't stop, the knight is gonna catch up to me, so it's like a very awkward situation, and it was very rough to get away from this. So our Lourdes has been unfortunately taken down. But map control is still not looking too bad. I mean, it's not looking too good either. It's like a middle middle ground. I think we have like a 50 30 situation. But what we need is outpost control. That's what we need actually in this game. Okay, so we need to wait for Lourdes to come back also. Our Econ is not... I mean, I don't know if we need actually the Devastation, not the Devastation, the Field of Fires, or if we should be going for the Rain. Because we know he has Boromir leadership, and he will have also Gandalf very, very soon. For now, he's spamming units like crazy. I think he's been recruiting at least 10 Gondor Knight Battalion at this point. He lost a few of them. He was recruiting also soldiers and tower guards. And that's why I love the patch 2.2 to so much, you know, because it gives you room for different strategies, like Boromir, for example, a very underrated hero in 1.06, he was basically useless. Now he has definitely way more room for the defense. And also infantry got buffed because the movement speed uh, boost to the soldiers and, I mean, basically to every infantry unit, also from the Uruks to Alvin warriors, everyone got a movement speed boost. The game feels now very fast. Which means people with fast reactions will be rewarded. I mean, to be honest with you, I was trying to play a 1.06 game the other day. <laughs> you can't play this game anymore. Trust me, when you play on 2.22 for a long time, and if you maybe if you agree with me, you can also let me know in the comment section down below what do you think about that. When you play 2.22 for a long time and you ever go back to 1.06 for whatever reason to play one or two games, then you will not enjoy it anymore because the game feels like in a slow motion mode for you. And it looks like everything is moving in grandma speed. Okay, so we need to be careful. The problem is I don't think we can leave the beast alone. We need first of all Saruman. Oh man. Like, I, I genuinely can't tell how many power points my opponent has. I can't tell it. But I want to take down this outpost so badly. The topside outpost from him. I want to destroy this so badly. He has Boromir here. Oh man. So let's go, boys. Let's go to the outpost topside. And let's hope that he has no many, uh, not many combos. So... Go, go, go. Warp Rider, this Pikeman Uruk combo, and Lord's leadership with the Warchan should be enough to, I hopefully, should be enough to destroy this outpost. I'm playing this game so bad, by the way. I'm, I'm feeding him so many power points, it's unbelievable, boys. I'm so excited to play against Dunedain, you know? But he's also playing very good. Okay, I mean, he's coming for a beast rush, but I'm paying attention to that. Um, he's not combining the tower guards with soldiers. Which I would... Oh, he has Gandalf there. Come here, Gandalf. Oh, he's Gandalf the White. Oh, but he's paying attention, of course. Oh, I could have crippled him. He stopped. Okay, never mind. It's okay, though. I mean, you know, you don't want to waste or miss your cripple. That's like the worst thing what you can do. When you have the feeling that your, that your cripple is going to be missed, it's always better to cancel it. Because players like Dunedain, they will see you missing it, and they know your ability is on cooldown, it means they can go ham with Gandalf and do whatever they want, you know? 
Oh man, I'm feeding. <laughs> I'm feeding so many PowerPoints. It's unbelievable. Oh my. <laughs> Guys, please, please don't flame me in the, in the comment section down below. Please don't flame me in the comment section down below. I'm playing so bad. I'm playing so bad. I'm feeding so many pikemen to him. That's unbelievable, man. I'm so ashamed, dude, with my performance in this game. But also proud at the same time that Tunadine is popping off on me like that. And I want to remind, I don't want to be annoying, but I need to remind you guys, we have currently a tournament going on, the World Championship, and there is a big chance we might fight in the tournament against Tunadine also in the quarterfinals. So if you haven't already, I would highly recommend you guys to follow me on my Twitch channel, Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards. You can find the link for that in the description down below, because every game, including my own games, will be broadcasted in my Twitch live stream, Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards. Okay, so we have now an army uh, with works and combos and Lord's leadership and Saruman leadership. I think we are very strong, but are we strong enough to push him? The problem is, I think in an army against army fight, we will win. But it's not like he's looking to fight against us in, in, in this case. I can't I can't really, you know, cripple the Boromium. I mean, I want to do it, but... You know, when I cripple Boromium, it's going to give his Ganoff the chance. Can I sell? Oh, I can't sell them. Oh my goodness, he's coming! No! Oh, man... You see, you know, he's playing it in a very smart way. You know, he's always coming to attack my beast to gather power points. You know, the multitasking is very important. You know what I wanted to do? <laughs> I wanted to control the enemy units with my Vorntong from Saruman, and I wanted to sell them later on inside my Citadel. But it's not possible, unfortunately, you know? <laughs> I didn't even know if it's possible or not, but now we have learned it. It's not working this way. Oh, he's paying attention to his units, and he will be... He used, he used heal on them, okay? I mean, that's good because now we know his heal is on cooldown. I am pretty certain that he has at bare minimum the eagle. So we need to be careful. We have only two combos and they are only level two. It means our damage output is not going to be that great. And we need to kill the eagles before they can kill us. That's very important, you know. He's even Grand Harvest. You can see his farms are glowing. We need definitely more combos. So we need at least three combos. And then we can hopefully make a move. But I'm playing this so bad, dudes. I'm playing this so bad. Oh, nice. We were able to save one of them. That's good. Kill the farm and get away. Get away. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. We are only 14 power points away from the Balrog special summon. That's going to be quite nice. If we can get it, get there. But again, if you compare the Balrog devastation power against the EOD, it depends on the situation. In this current situation, the EOD would be more impactful because the only thing that can keep Wait, hold on a second. Okay, nice. The only thing that can keep this Gondor... I want to cripple him. Can I cripple him? Is he, is he paying attention? Please? Please? Cripple, cripple, cripple! Oh, man. Lords, where are you, my friend? You are so far away, dude, for no reason. You see, he keeps rushing me all the time. <laughs> I, it's, you know, like, I'm telling you, he's playing out of his mind. Uh, in addition to that, I am playing really bad. So, it, the combination of him playing out of his mind and me playing bad is an absolute disaster. For me. Let's level up the units once again. Keeping map control now against Gandalf is going to be quite challenging. Oh boy. So, um, the problem is my beast is going to be very vulnerable against Gandalf in the horses. And look, he's, you know, <laughs> looking for opportunity. Looking for a chance to do that. Now let's go to him to the outpost. He's running for his life. Um... But you see, the second he sees me rotating, four Gondor Knights with Gandalf are coming. Don't, 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 don't. Don't let them blast, no, don't let them blast you for free. He's gonna be able to destroy my Uruk Pit, isn't he? He's gonna be able to destroy my Uruk Pit, isn't he? He's gonna be able to destroy my Uruk Pit, isn't he? Oh, we're gonna lose 50% production speed. Oh, that's rough. Oh, never mind, he's... Nah, ne oh, of course, of course. Oh, man, I need to... Oh, man, run, 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 run. Run, 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 run. Okay, oh, he cancelled it, okay. I mean, we killed a lot of his Gondor Knights, but we lost the um, Uruk Pit. And you see, I need to rotate non-stop, you know. And that's called speed and tempo from him. That's the way he's, I mean, he's supposed to play like that. The second he sees me rotating with my army and my heroes to a location, he can punish me for it. The way he did. 
So maybe that's not gonna be a video tutorial about how to play Isengard against Gondor, but maybe it's more about how to play Gondor against Isengard, because he's having a phenomenal performance in this game. Phenomenal. Okay, I don't know what I'm supposed to do though. I can't really leave Lourdes in the base, I need Lourdes with my army. But then, when I have Lourdes with my army, he can come with his Gandalf to my main castle. And I'm not that mobile. Counted that. Oh, but I see Trebuchet. Okay, I will take this every day of the week. Boromir knocking down our units with now Warchan on cooldown. But killing Trebuchet is going to re reward us with a lot of power points. It's pretty good. Okay, so... Um, I don't know what Gandalf is though. We have 8 power points. Maybe we need to stall until Baldrog and hope that we will have Baldrog before he will have EOT. That's like the most important stage, right? Because if he gets EOT before my Baldrog, I will lose. And when I get Baldrog, I need to kind of make a simultaneous push to buff his outpost. I need to destroy the outpost so that I only have to destroy the castle to win the game. Nice, we killed one more Trebuchet. That's good. Okay, so um, the problem is the Alvin Wood in the middle of the map, you know. I can't really cover this. If I cover this, he can cover mine. Because, you know, the Tinted Land and also Alvin Wood, they have the same cooldown. So, can't really cover this one. Okay. I mean, we have like a full population. Maybe I'm playing too scared. But I'm so scared. I'm being honest, guys. I'm playing so passive. Because I don't want to lose this game. But maybe playing that passive is going to make me lose this game. It's like a very... Paradoxa, you know, it's like a very weird situation in which I am not sure what the right step would be. Because he sees my army now in the middle of the map, I'm pretty sure, certain that he's gonna attack my base very soon. And you see, even though I'm, I keep pressuring the map a little bit, but he immediately makes sure to destroy my settlements. Immediately. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, go, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. No, 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 no. Okay, not the best blast in the game. He's gonna be able to destroy my siege works now. That's gonna slow my uh, siege. Don't kill the ballista. One ballista is gonna be enough to save the day. Dude, it's okay though, because when we are trading uh, kills like that, in which I kill a lot of his Gondor Knights, I think I win the power point race. So him destroying my siege works is not gonna give him as many power points as me destroying... Or killing some of the Gondor Knights, you know? Okay. So the map is not looking too bad for us. I mean, but once again, what is important are those two outposts. Now the question is, can I capture this outpost without losing too much of my main castle? I'm coming. I, wanna, I want him to fight against me so badly, but he's avoiding the fight. Which is, of course... Annoying, but also smart from him at the same time, so I can't even blame him on that one. I mean, taking a... Oh my goodness, he just... Don't kill him, please. Okay, Banner was able to survive. Oh, he has Trebuchet. Fireball the Trebuchet, Saruman. Do it, Saruman. The White Wizard. Nice, okay. I mean, I could cripple this Faramir, right? But I can't, you know. <laughs> I need to keep my cripple for his Gandalf. That's very important. Because when I cripple Faramir, he's gonna come in clutch with the Gandalf, with the Wizard Blast in heal. He will be able to blast my army and get away also with the heal. Can't let this happen. Okay, so outpost destroyed. We can also buy the outpost and try to siege him from this location, but I'm pretty certain that he's gonna attack my main base very soon. Do you see? Level 7 Gondor Knights. My army in the base is not gonna be that strong, I believe, you know, against Gandalf, so... <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Boys, help me. Look, he's coming immediately. I, what? <laughs> ah, he's gonna attack my beast too and outpost at the same time. So, look, that's he's playing it so good because he's forcing me to make choices, to decide myself which one is more important for me and which one should I protect and which one should I let get destroyed. And of course, the decision is very simple. For when you play Evil Faction, your main castle is, of course, way more valuable in compared to outpost. Don't run into him! Run, run, run away! Run away! No, 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 no! Oh. 
Yeah, enough, I hate you. I hate you, wizard. Saruman, why are you not that mobile, man? Get on your horse, Saruman. <laughs> maybe you can have, like, the May... Um, not Shadow Facts, but maybe you can have the May... Uh, May your horse be... Not Shadow Facts, but something else. Um, but can, you know... Guys, quick question. When Saruman would have a horse... What would be the name of the horse? We know Gandalf's horse is Shadow Facts, but I would, I'm curious, if Saruman the White would have a horse, maybe he would be called, the horse would be called a Worm Tongue Facts or something. Grima Facts. <laughs> okay, beautiful. We actually get to destroy those trebuchet. It's very good. I mean, again, trebuchet giving us so many power points when we destroy it. It's amazing. Nice. Get away. And he even summoned his elves. I mean, you know what? In this scenario, I'm fine losing my Warc Rider because I lose one Warc Rider Battalion, but he summons his Rangers, and also he loses three Trebuchet with Firestone. So he's losing way more than I do. And I also gain more power points. I mean, money is not looking too bad. We are talking about Isengard in late game with like level 3 furnaces all over the place, with industry being used over and over again. Sorry, our Ecom. Can I cripple him, boys? Can I revenge? Oh, yeah, he's oh, yes! Now it's a bad situation though because I need to fight out of the land. So I need to kinda come to this location here. I can't really do it on the land though. It's, you know. No, 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 no. Why are they running into. Man, fireball. Oh, there comes the eagle summon. Kill, 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 kill. I, I wanna, I wanna, I still wanna kill this Gandalf first. Oh boy. Oh boy. To be honest, this Gandalf survived longer than I thought. I have the will of Saruman, I can heal him. Kill this eagle too, and run away, Saruman and Lourdes. Run away. I want to control them so badly. Nice, I control them. My Saruman is dead. Yeah, he's dead. I really hope that I, was, I will be able to kill this eagle before Saruman goes down. Dude, if Saruman wouldn't have been dead, I think this fight would be nice, because I was controlling all his Gondonites, all of them. And I'm pretty certain that he got like so many power points from this battle. He killed all my army, including my two heroes. I think he is very close to EOD. But we have now, we have now the Balrog available. The problem is Balrog all alone can't finish the beast of the Gondor faction. So we need to summon the Balrog and use the Balrog to break the gate. Then use the Warkriders to actually finish off the beast with the help of the Balrog, of course. But here's like the full map, dude. Oh, man. Oh man, I was having, this, you know, in my head, this play was much more, much better. Me crippling this Gandalf, I was expecting Gandalf to be dead way sooner. And I didn't expect such an outcome. So it was like the worst outcome, even though the circumstances were actually in my fever. Are you attacking the gate, Balrog? Balrog! Attack the gate, dude! Oh man, it's, this game is driving me crazy. What's happening with you, Balrog, man? Screw the gate, dude. Just go ham. I can't believe that I wasted 500 hours of my time with Balrog. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, GG. Hey, GG, well, please, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, <laughs> make sure to still leave a like. Flame me in the comment section down below all you want. You played very, very good. I mean, I can't defend this anymore. I'm losing the majority of my bees. He will be able to destroy my Orphan, and it means I won't be able to revive my heroes anytime soon. Uh, we killed Balrog, uh, we killed Gandalf, but we lost the game. Oh man, guys, I can still believe it. The way this fight played off was so much better in my mind, in my head. Oh man. Yeah, he's gonna be able to destroy it. Please don't destroy it. I wanna get my heroes back at least. It's okay, nice. We killed actually a lot of his Condonites. You see the Isengard beast? I mean, I'm just like lurking around at this point, it's over. There is no way I can turn this game around anymore. Oof, man. I, guys, I played this bad because I was kind of too lazy, you know? I was not. Um, what can I say? I was not. I was scared, you know, to make a move. And I was kind of wasting time in my castle. That was my biggest mistake. We had like a couple of mistakes in the game. You know, at the beginning with the slaughterhouse, which was getting destroyed and everything else. You know, 
it couldn't be any worse. Okay, guys, see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself, keep hitting like a truck, and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.